Welcome to our Facebook Live Physician Lecture. I'm Trish higgins Karowski. Getting your child involved in sports at a young age is a great way for them to learn the value of hard work, discipline, respect, but every sport comes with some risk for injury. So today we're going to talk about pediatric orthopedic sports injuries, or just pediatric sports injuries. Uh, Dr. Ryan Price is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare, and he is here to talk about this to and any other questions you might have. So please, please feel, feel free, free to post them below, and, and we'll get to your questions. questions. Dr. Price, yes. before we get too far into the weeds, will you please explain the difference between pediatric orthopedics and adult orthopedic injuries? Uh, pediatric uh, orthopedic injuries usually they correspond with the physis, growth plates, um, they're growing very rapidly, they tend to get really tight, uh, they tend to get overuse injuries much better. Uh, a moniker I have is kids tend not to sprain things, they tend to break things. Oh, really? Usually they fracture through their growth plate. Now see, that's, the, that's different from what I thought. I thought, I thought kids kind of bend a little bit better at, when well, they're young. They do. I mean, even when they bend a bone a little bit and it looks on x-ray, it looks okay, it's still broken and we have to protect it, but they'll heal. They heal very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's the growth plates that you're concerned about. Yeah, um, yes, and that's, that's probably the most common. Uh, it's usually their injuries are growth plate related. Uh, it's not something that's generally seen on an x-ray. It's more of a clinical diagnosis. X-rays are kind of to rule other stuff out, but you generally, generally it's the growth plates that are getting kind of damaged or injured. Okay, what kind of sports injuries do you see? Um, I think the most common are uh, like they, they come in for ankle sprains, but they're typically what we call Salter Harris growth plate fractures. They're non-displaced, and like I said, we treat them in, in cast. We, sometimes we have they have to stay off of it. Um, and then overuse type injuries, uh, pitchers, throwers, they keep they get overuse, and they'll actually get um, like a chronic. Like a like almost like a stress fracture, mm -hmm. and then they just start having pain, and you'll start to see that because they start their form starts to fail, um, and then sprains, knee pain, ankle pain, and uh, um, it tends to be around some of the uh, the big tendon insertions that they start having pain. Okay, I wanna I wanna pick up on this overuse because I know um, I've noticed that a lot of coaches nowadays are encouraging kids to pick a sport. If yeah. they're looking for a scholarship, pick a sport, commit to it, and don't do multi-sports during the year. What do you think about that? I, oh man, playing, doing anything repetitive over and over and over again, you really need a break from these things. Uh, throwers are probably the easiest, um, the easiest to kind of pick on, uh, just because we we are aware of it. We have pitch counts for kids, and they're just always throwing. Ideally, you want to. Um, at least take a season off four months in between the sports or if you can um, alternate or cross train, train the body a different way. When you look at most uh, professional athletes, they didn't just play one sport. Mm -hmm. Now granted, they're at the top of the food chain as far as athletics and whatever they did, they were just graced to be excellent. But for the most part, you really, they really should be taking breaks. Now there are some sports where that's very difficult. Gymnastics, it's like every day, it's year round. There's uh, there's, it's, it's just a, it's like a full-time job for these kids early on. So you just have to get the body strong enough to endure staying with one sport, but it's just much better if they can cross-train. So what would you say to a, uh, you know, I'm, I want to put my little, little Jenny in, in uh, gymnastics. Uh -huh. What would you say to me? What would you tell me to do to keep her safe? Uh, just make sure that we stay strong, we stay limber and flexible and stretch. Uh, in gymnastics, I see the most common, they, most common things they complain about. They get their forearm fractures and things, but the most common is they all complain of heel pain, they all complain of ankle pain, they complain of uh, knee pain. Uh, we have uh, names for those, it's called Seaver's disease or Osgood Slaughter's disease or sometimes patellofemoral syndrome. And most of that has to do with they're just too tight. So they'll stretch according to how they need to stretch for to look right or for the role, but mm -hmm. they're so usually they're ignoring their calves, they're ignoring their quadriceps, and it's just that chronic tightness all the time. And really, they've gotten to the point that they just accept it to be normal. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're doing gymnastics, 
it's just gonna have pain, it's just how it is. It'll be over in 12 years when you're done. No pain, no gain, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the wrong attitude when you're dealing with kids who are still growing. Yeah, as long as they're aggressively stretching, you can keep that pain to a minimum or absolve it. How long would an aggressive stretch be to you? How, how long should they be stretching before they start working out? Well, I'm a big fan of stretching the calves every day for these kids. Uh, just if they're not having pain prophylactically and I have them sit on a, stand on a stool with just their toes, their heels are down, they're leaned up against the wall, and I like them to be up there for nine minutes a day. I tell them to put it in the living room, to zone out. Yeah, it's a serious, I don't have them stretch everything this nine minutes This is for apart. gymnastics, so. Well, anyone that has tight heel cords mm -hmm. and they're complaining of heel pain. I, I myself, uh, when I played soccer, when I was in junior high, mm -hmm. um, or middle school now, uh, they had, um, I had heel pain, and it turns out that's what it was, and then so, uh, you know, I had no idea and no one said anything to me about it, but it, it boils down to stretching. So anyone that complains of this or all gymnasts, mm -hmm. I have them stretched just like this. When they come in for anything, wrist pain, I'm like, great, let me check your calves. And because really? they're all like, oh yeah, we always have this pain. So, so it's under, it's underutilized in the, in the high school sports world. Oh, big time, big time. It's almost like a mystery and they look at me like I'm crazy because they've never heard it before. Wow, wow, I'm glad to hear this. Yeah. Um, okay, um, okay, so, so stretching, stretching is a good, good preventative. preventative. Big time. Okay. That's the most, the most, yeah. The most important? Yeah. Yes, every, every majority of the things I see every day are secondary to being too tight. Wow. So kids are, um, they're growing rapidly. Like, I've been the same height for 20 years. They have just changed height in a very short period of time. Those, mus those, those bones are growing very rapidly. The muscle and tendons cannot keep up. And so sometimes I'll say, well, how tall are you? And I said, well, they measure me, I'm five foot five. I was like, okay, you're five foot five, but the muscle and tendons are used to you being like five foot two or five foot three. So they're really tight. They can't touch their toes. Everything's really tight. Their hamstrings are tight. Really tight. And um, that's what we address. And so if they really hit, they're stretching hard, uh, usually whatever they come in complaining of starts to go away. Wow. But it's not an overnight ordeal. They got to do it for months. Okay, now we are in the end of the summer here. We've had extreme heat, and we've got a lot of kids who are doing fall sports. Yeah. Does extreme heat affect what you do with these kids? I think so. I'm not 100% sure what the data or the literature says about it, but you know, the heat fatigues them much faster. And what we do know is when kids are fatigued, or the muscles are getting tired or they're not conditioned for it, that's when their form fails. When their form fails, injuries are much more prone. So I think when it's like more hot, more prolonged, uh, you see it in the college ranks as well. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of these footballs beforehand, uh, football players, uh, just for instance, with their um, um, late summer training before getting into the fall, uh, the injuries, you just all, every time you just see someone so tore this or someone so got a concussion or tore ACL, I'm not contributing ACL tears to the sun, but for the most part, it, it does uh, question what the heat does exhaust the body. For, for parents especially, you know, I mean, I'm sending my child out on that field, I want to know mm -hmm. that he's going to be okay. Well, down in, here in the south, it gets a, a ridiculous hot. Mm -hmm. Not only that, with the the humidity, it's just there. Even even in the shade, you're getting some reprieve, but the just temperature doesn't change. Um, so just make sure that they're staying hydrated. Make sure that their uh, their youth league teams are following uh, youth league and high school teams are following the FHSAA guidelines for uh, hydration, taking breaks, protocols, making sure they have unlimited water supply, getting regular breaks in the shade, things along those lines. Um, let's talk compact, uh, contact sports and mm -hmm. specifically football. Okay. High collision sports. High collision yeah. sports. Yeah, that's I hadn't heard it put that way, but it's true. Mm -hmm. um, what are the preventative measures that you absolutely insist upon? Uh, well, I guess the the, the biggest uh, topic is typically concussions, mm -hmm. and then so uh, it's just learning how, making sure that all the players have the fundamentals of how to tackle, uh, not leading with their head, not spearing. Um, and you know, 20 years ago, uh, there was a much less emphasis on concussions and spearing was just something that you knew was probably going to get your bell rung. Mm -hmm. But uh, but now it's I mean, there, there's much more. You get ejected as targeting. You're having um, uh, when someone gets a concussion, they're sitting immediately. So everyone is very much more on edge to protect their head so they can stay in the games. Okay, so what what's the protocol for coaches, say you get your bell rung on the field? What's the yeah. protocol for coaches as far as concussions? 
now it's it's pretty sensitive so if they have any sort of uh, like a vestibular imbalance like they get dizzy or they just say I have a headache or you just see them look like they're in a fog for instance uh, they're young healthy ha you know most of them are really smart and you know they they, re they seem to recover really quick mm -hmm. there's they're sit there that you sit them they're done and now and they need to be I was surprised to find out you or other orthopedic surgeons are at these high school games in yeah. the region correct That's tell right. me about that so all of us um, who uh, see a lot of sports injuries or are very sports interested um, we for all the high schools we all tend to have a high school that we cover uh, fairly regularly so when we have most of the schools have athletic trainers as well and we work very uh, very closely with them and so when um, you know your school has a, there's usually one of us docs there at the at the game so kid goes down in the field we're usually out there taking a look at them talking to them on the sideline even for the away team we're checking both of them just making sure everyone is so so safe. really as a parent I'm in the stands my 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 child comes off the field limping yeah. I don't know exactly whether he's broken his ankle or he's he sprained it or whatever. You're there to look at that first. Yeah, me or one of my partners. Mm -hmm. And then you would advise the parents or the coach as to what to do about the child. Yeah, and we, um, you, we make an evaluation, look at them, see if they can keep playing or if they shouldn't play. Um, maybe it's something that can be taped. Work with the athletic trainers. They know the kids way better than we do. So I'm like, how's this kid? And uh, have they been dealing with this? Is this a chronic issue? Um, or is this just kind of cramping or? Um, we make the evaluation and we're there on site it's and we can usually tell. It's good to know there's an actual medical doctor there looking. Yeah, it's, it, it's a rare rare instance when we're not there really? and for all the, the local Tallahassee high school teams. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Um, when you see a child that looks a little bit off on the field then, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, you, you, you have them bring them in. I do. And with, uh, with the school that I look after, uh, if they were sitting that way, that would be my recommendation, and, and that's what I'm telling the coach. Now, I don't necessarily have jurisdiction over the other team who may have come in from out of state, but I tell the coach, I tell the trainer, I even talk to the parents who my recommendations are. Uh -huh. um, when we've got a lot of kids playing one sport, con these, high, these high collision sports, I don't want to demonize any sport. No way. I loved it. Right. But of these high impact sports what's the one you see the most injuries from wow uh it really depends on the season but most of it's really overuse injuries i see a lot of baseball I see oh. a lot of gymnastics um and during football season i see a lot of football okay but you're a doctor and you're not going to say that you know sports are bad for the kids no way i mean everything that you said discipline respect uh, internal intrinsic motivations it's uh, uh helps them kind of grow up Okay, so you, it, if you had an opportunity to say one thing to the coaches and the parents out there at the beginning of, what would you tell them? They, you get, they, your kids have got to stretch. They, when you look at any injury over time, or even look at professional athletes, what slows them down? They keep getting a nagging groin pull, groin pull. It comes back, they bounce back. They're not as good as they were before, so, and then they retire. So even in the, the lower ranks of uh, high school or even college, it always boils down, I'd probably say 90% of them, they end because of some sort of chronic issue that could have been prevented with stretching. The hamstrings are not stretched nearly enough. Um, their calves, I mean, you, you get tendon ruptures you know, later on with the guys that have been in the game a long time, but the biggest thing is just is staying flexible. And it's all the stretches that they're going through beforehand is the warm-ups, but I really emphasize before they go to bed at night, spend doing all their stretches and spending at least a minute doing um, each one of their stretches and holding it for that, that period of time. They're not gaining ground with 10 seconds before, a, before practice or before a game or something. All they're doing is just, it's like a light warm up. If they got an underlying issue or they're just really tired or they're prone to pull their, ha pull their hamstring, which mm -hmm. is a hamstring tear right. or a quad tear, um, after that injury, they're gonna be even more prone to do it again because when muscle tears, it fills in with fibrous tissue, which makes them even more tight afterwards. So then they got to even stretch even more, and, and none of them are very rarely. The only kids that come into my office that I think have appropriate flexibility are ballet dancers. 
That's well, it. I was going to say, maybe we should add a yoga teacher to the athletic staff at every school. Not a bad idea. Really? Okay. Yeah, not a bad idea. Okay. Great information, Dr. Price. I appreciate it very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to all of our, our viewers. Um, if you'd like to learn more about pediatric orthopedic, uh, our program here at Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare, please visit tmh.org slash kidsortho. I'm Trish Higgins-Karowski. Thanks for joining us.